What's up guys, this is Theo here. Welcome back to part two of Free Code Camp HTML5 and CSS3 starting with lesson 31. So let me go ahead and sign in. Oops, sorry, let me sign in with my email. And um, let's keep going. So um, we're gonna start with create a form element. And uh, let's just follow these tests. So what I wanna do is uh let's see it's like okay so we're on the next one okay so what we want to do is uh add a submit button to your form element with the type submit so we're going to say input type and change that to submit you can see there's the submit button right there and submit as its text um cool looks like that should be good let me see what else Type says submit. Your, your submit button should only have the text submit. Make sure your button has a. Oh, sorry, a button. Should have the, okay, my bad. It's going to be a button with the type of submit. And a button. Let's say submit. There it is. We run that. That's good to go. So um, next one is uh, your text input element should have the required attribute. So we're gonna put uh, required on here. And so now if we try and submit it without it, it'll say please fill out this field. So let's run that, let's move on. So next one is add a pair of radio buttons to your form. So we'll do that by saying, uh, my bad, I want to give it a label. And this accepts an ID for the four parameter. And we'll just say radio and uh, um, label elements. Each YouTube radio button should be nice in its own label element. On the radio, we should have the label indoor. So one's going to be indoor. And the other one is going to be a label for outdoor. And then um, I'm going to add some radio buttons. So input type. Um, the type is radio. And uh, the other one will be input type is radio. And then we'll say name equals indoor. And name is equal to outdoor. Run the test. Give your radio buttons the name and attribute of indoor outdoor. My bad. Indoor, or sorry, indoor outdoor, and, and then uh, indoor outdoor. And then when your radio button should have the label indoor. Uh, label input type radio. And your input button should have the label indoor. I guess we got to give this ID of indoor and ID of outdoor. Run that one more time. And your button should have the label for option indoor. Pair of radio buttons for one should have the option of indoor and the other should have the option of outdoor. So it says one of your radio buttons should have the label indoor. Label, oh no, I guess we don't need the four, huh? Label, I can get rid of that. It's been a while since I've used radio buttons, to be honest. I hardly ever use this. Um, so, label, input type is radio. Okay. So, we're just going to say indoor and uh, outdoor. Cool, there we go. You can see you can switch between them. Now let's run our test and that should work. Next one up is add to your form a set of three checkboxes. Each checkbox should be um, nested with another label. All three should have the name, attribute, and personality. So let's go here and we'll do, um, we'll do a label. And inside here, input. 
type of checkbox and uh, and uh, three. It almost should be nice to give you checkbox the name attribute of personality. It's just going to be name of personality. And um, next one is another label. We're going to add this one. One more, and um, let's see what we're missing. New checkbox: the name, attribute of personality. So I think it's a personality, lowercase. And that one as well. Cool. Um, next up is your first radio button on your form should be checked by default. So we can do that by going to the first one and saying checked. Or sorry, um, first radio button. So we're gonna do checked. You can see it already appears as checked. Cool. First checkbox should be um, checked as well. So we're gonna say checked. There it is. Cool. Let's submit that. And let's move on. So next thing is nest your key element. Um, inside your div elements. So, let's see. What are we going to do? Uh, try putting your opening div tag above things cast log. Okay, so we're going to make a div. And then we're going to nest. Uh, so, nest your peer elements inside your div elements. Nest your UL element, your OL. Make sure you do. Okay, so we put it right there. Let's indent this. Cool. And let's run that. And it works. All right. Next one is create a class called um, dot silver background. And we're gonna give this a background color silver. And then assign this class to your div element. So we go down to the div and we'll class. We'll say our class is going to be silver background and you can see it has applied. Let's move on. Next one is going to be give your form element the ID cat photo form. So we'll say ID. ID equals cat photo form. And let's run that. Nice. Um, next one will be uh, um, try giving your form, which now is the ID attribute of cat photo form, a green background. So we got to build out this ID. So we'll say cat photo form. And uh, what we want to do here, we can, uh, we're going to give this a background color of green. See that it's not changed. Let's run that. Awesome. Next one up is we're gonna add some padding. So let's just change the padding of your green box to match that of the red box. So green box to match that red box. So we're gonna change this to 20. Let's run our code. Looks good. Next one is your green box clash should give elements 20 pixels of margin. We'll change that to 20. All right, so you can read about margin padding. Basically, there's a whole box model. You have margin padding, border, um, yeah, and then positioning. I honestly get them confused all the time. But your green box class should give elements a negative 15 pixels of margin. Okay, so change this to negative 15. You can see what happens. It sort of like you know went up. All right, let's move on. So next one is give the green box a padding of 40 pixels. Uh, green box, so we'll say, you can do this, right? So you can you can either define them like this, you know, padding top, right, left, bottom, whatever, or you can do, you can do it clockwise. I do, I honestly usually do the longer way around um, just because, I don't know, maybe I, I don't always remember the shorthand, but uh, you can do this. Uh, so padding of 40 pixels on its top, so we'll say 40, um, and then 
and then 40, 20, 20, 40. I think this will actually work too. I think 54 to 20. Um, 40, 20 pixels. We can run this. No, I guess I got that wrong. 40 pixels. 50 pixels. Yeah, I guess I did it wrong. So it's see top, um, right, bottom, left. All right, cool. That worked. Next one up is give the green box a margin of 40 pixels on its top and left. Let's say 40, 20, 20, 40 pixels. Let's see, it moved it down, and more space on the sides. Um, cool. So it's good to go. Next one up will be, see, I was talking about this clockwise notation. So it says to give the green box class a padding of 40 pixels. So say padding 40. 20, 20, 40 pixels. Awesome. Let's run that. Looks good. Next up will be uh, the element class and margin of 40 pixels. Again, this is what we've just been doing. So we'll do margin 40, 20, 20, 40 pixels. And then, awesome. Let's keep going. Next up will be uh, give your body element the background color of black. So body. Background color, like black. Awesome. Let's run that. Looks good. Next up, we'll be um, creating an H1 element. All right. Um, hello world. All right, there it is. Uh, body element, color property of green. Color of green. All right. And uh, body element, the font family of mono space. So we'll say font family is mono space and then h1 font family inherit and uh, inherit the color green and we'll say color inherit. Awesome. Let's run that. Looks good. Next up will be give your h1 or sorry, create a CSS class called pink text. So we'll say dot pink text and color is pink. And then we will apply this to our H1. So we'll say H1 class is pink text. You can see its color change. Uh, okay, let's run that. Next up is uh, your H1 should have the class blue text. So let's add on blue text dot blue text. And uh, I'm guessing the color is blue. And this is also going to have the class of blue text. So both blue text and pink, pink text should belong. Your H1 element should be blue. So I think, no loss, this is done with some put it first. Blue text, H1, why is it getting, why is it picking up that? We'll, we'll try and maybe. Okay, yeah, so it's gonna look in the last rule that you have defined, and it's gonna go off that one. It doesn't matter the order of this, the order of what's in your style sheet. Uh, because blue text is declared second, it overrides the attributes, yeah, okay. It's been a while since I've done that. Uh, next up will be, give your H1 element the ID of orange text. So we'll make a ID of orange text. And uh, we'll use color of orange. And then do not give your h1 any style attributes. Your h1 element should be orange. Okay, so we're gonna say orange text. And then, oh, sorry, it's not a class, it's an ID. My bad. ID equals, let's apply that. IDs will always override. Um, classes in terms of like specificity so that's why this is orange no matter what you could even place this you know you could place this way before here it's going to override it all right so next up is um, uh, give your h1 element the inline style color of white so inline styles override everything so it's a style color of white let's see it's not white this is even stronger than an id all right 
just run that. Next one is, uh, and the important keyword is even stronger than all of this. So the print text class should have the important keyword to override everything. This will even override the inline style. There we go. Let's run that. Next one up is uh, use the hex code for the color black instead of the word black. So it's it's a uh, six zero. So you can also use three. It's the same. And uh, let's run this. Awesome. Next one up is uh, place the color words in our style element with the correct hex codes. So we'll say Dodger blue is going to be going to be this color. You'll see them change along the way. Green is going to be this one. I don't honestly memorize these, but you could put them in like a color map if you want to. Orange is this, and red is going to be that one. Awesome, let's run these, and it looks good. Next up, we'll be try using the abbreviated hexes. Like I told you, you can do it with just three, so we'll do cyan. Looks like a good look sign. Looks like a good look right there. White blue. Um, green is this one. Uh, red is this one. My last one is fuchsia, which is honestly I forget what fuchsia looks like either. I'm so sorry. Like a pink kind. Uh, so let's run that, and that's good. And next up is your body element should have a black background. Okay, these are RGB to give your uh, body and up color of black. So this is RGB stands for red, green, blue, and then you can also have optionally A, which is alpha channel, the opacity, RGB, so we'll say 255, 165, 0, and, uh, and uh, 265, 165. Yeah, example, body, definitely color. Oh, sorry, that wasn't the one. It's uh, 0, 0, 0. Zero, zero, zero is black, okay, awesome. Next one up is uh, place the color words in our style element with their correct RGB, so blue, it's gonna be this one, all right. Um, red is this one, orchid is this one, and uh, finally, Sienna is, also I've never heard of one of these colors, is this one. All right, cool. And next one up is, let me just make it to, let me make sure we didn't make it to just, did we just finish HTML? I think we did. All right, so I'm gonna start with Bootstrap and the next one, Bootstrap is just a responsive uh, framework that you know lets you build out your HTML and CSS pretty quickly. Uh, for mobile devices and a lot of different devices. Well, that's it for this one, guys. So we did 31 to 59. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and I, as always, guys, please subscribe and support the channel. It means a lot to me. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.